Thank you very much, Her Excellency, Your Excellency, Dr. Monique. Thank you very much for those comments and especially for highlighting for us those four big items on what we as Africans need to do if we are going to end um, violence against children. I will take away especially your pledge of commitment and support of the African Union to ACPF and the African Partnership because that is a fundamental important way of working. Thank you very, very much for that as well, Your Excellency. And with those brief remarks, um, I want to now take us to the next session of, of our conference this afternoon. And the next session is where we are going to be listening and hearing from four ministers who have responsibility for the line ministries that are responsible for children. And these are our ministers from Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Namibia and Tunisia. In a moment, I will introduce each one of them and then um, we will take them one after the other. But we will have the pleasure of listening to their reflections based on these reports and what is going on in their own specific countries. You will notice that we have been deliberate about ensuring that the four ministers who are speaking to us this afternoon are representing different geopolitical regions of the continent. This is a reflection of ACPF's commitment to be pan-African and to be inclusive. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies and honorable ministers, I have the pleasure of introducing to you first the lineup of our four ministers. We have Her Excellency, Mrs. Nasan Nasaneba Ture Dian, who is the Minister of Women, Families and Children from the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire. We have also with us this afternoon, Her Excellency, Mrs. Doreen Nampia Sioka, the Minister of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication and Child Welfare from the Republic of Namibia. We have the privilege and the honor of having Mrs. Her Excellency, Mrs. Helene Marie Lorenz Ibudo, the Minister of Women, National Solidarity, Family and Humanitarian Action from the Republic of Burkina Faso. And last but not least, the pleasure of having Her Excellency, Mrs. Imen Zahoni Kuimel, who have we have had the pleasure of interacting with in different forums on violence against children. She is family and the elderly from the Republic of Tunisia, representing North Africa. And now, without taking much more time, I would like to introduce to you our first speaker from the... Et présente. Donc, nous, les progrès que nous avons eus 
en Côte d'Ivoire depuis l'année 2012. Donc, depuis 2012, la Côte d'Ivoire qui sortait d'une période de crise s'est dotée de moyens d'offrir à ses enfants un cadre de protection qui met en synergie d'action. le respect des droits des enfants et la protection de toutes les catégories d'enfants en incluant dans son programme national de développement des actions fortes qui contribuent à proposer l'enfant comme une ressource dont le respect contribue au développement du capital humain. We had a stock-taking exercise, and we have proposed, we have suggested to rethink um, the position of children in our country in order to protect them better. Therefore, since 2013, we have had great strides, especially a national policy for the protection of children, and in 2013, we have adopted a national policy for protecting children with its plan of action, with key actions in a system to manage data collection that's active in 50% of our social services on the national territory, of course. The same year, we have implemented a national free helpline to report violence, to report cases and abuses on children. This is what we have called the green line, 116. It's called Allo Enfant. The functioning of this helpline has shown the magnitude of the vulnerabilities that children are facing. Also, it showed how crucial it was to take them in charge. Therefore, Côte d'Ivoire has decided to continue its efforts. And in 2014, we implemented a child parliament for Côte d'Ivoire. The same year, we have adopted a law to help orphan children so that they are protected by the government. We have also produced documents on uh, supporting children victims of violence. In 2015, Côte d'Ivoire has ratified the Hague Convention of 1993 related to uh, protection of children and international cooperation uh, in terms of adoption. And Côte d'Ivoire has also ratified the additional protocol of the CRC about uh, pornography. In 2018, we have had uh, norms and standards for protecting and safeguarding children that are in care centers. And we have implemented a mechanism that's operational now um, to have families to support children that are orphaned. And in 2019, we have implemented an interministerial uh, committee for protecting children. This is meant to amplify the protection of children and to end violence against children by suggesting the proper solutions. In 2020, the private sector has taken a number of uh, um, uh, measures, especially a system of surveillance monitoring of uh, labor work. The government has also created a foundation in order uh, to um, collect uh, money from the private sector to support these priorities. We still have challenges ahead of us. 
Of course, we have the uh, challenges to overcome. Despite these policies and plans implemented to safeguard children and children's rights, our country is still facing violence against children. I want to um, talk here about some of the main challenges, the high prevalence rates of violence against children based on the um, main uh, censuses and uh, health surveys. It shows that three women out of five, so 58 percent, have suffered violence in their childhood. Despite the implementation and enforcement of the laws adopted, there is still a high prevalence of uh, sexual, physical violence and emotional violence, but a few of them are reported, especially sexual violence. However, there is a change of uh, behavior towards children that should help um, eliminating violence against children. We also have to uh, favor uh, the fighting against impunity and amicable uh, dispute settlement, especially when it comes to sexual violence. As priorities in Côte d'Ivoire, we aim at revising our national uh, strategy and we have to rethink this strategy based on the current um, priorities and challenges. We are a champion country in terms of the implementation of seven different strategies to promote uh, different types of support for children, especially on education and the involvement of private sector and protection of children in the digital sector. Therefore, we want to efficiently bring an end to violence against children and achieve the objectives and goals of Agenda 2063, Agenda 2040, and Agenda 2030 to have a world free of violence against children. Also, the countries have to uh, have a platform to exchange experiences in order to transform the political landscape and social norms and gender norms in order to considerably reduce violence against children. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank, thank you very much, um, Monsieur. Thank you for representing the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire and for delivering the, the remarks of your honor minister and i note your pragmatism and your realism in that you acknowledge not only the progress but also the challenges and i think really that is the way to go to acknowledge where it is that we have made leaps and bounds but also mm -hmm. to acknowledge the gaps and it is through such acknowledgement then then we have an appreciation that we can use to move forward and to actualize um a country where children is um a country where children do not um, face any forms of violence. So thank you very much, and please extend our sincere appreciation to Her Excellency Merci. the Minister. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci. Okay, I hope you will stay with us. Please do not leave. Um, as I take this opportunity to introduce um, our next minister, who will be the second speaker in this interministerial panel, and we have with us um, Her Excellency Mrs. Doreen Nampiers Yorka who is the Minister of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication, and Child Welfare from the Republic of Namibia. Um, Your Excellency, I cannot see you on the screen, but I believe you're here with us. You have the floor. Yes, there you go. Lovely to see you again. Welcome. Thank you very much. Director of Ceremonies, the distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> I'm pleased to be part of this high-level continental conference that takes stock of progress on our shared goal of creating Africa 
an African free from violence against children. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be briefly highlight on the progress, challenges, and priorities for present and future action in our quest to eradicate violence against children in Namibia and to be part of Africa, African and global goals of ending violence against children in all its forms. Number one, progress. Namibia ratified the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of Children and the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. We have also ratified the protocol on prevent, to prevent, sorry, suppress and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children. That's Paramo Protocol, the UN Treaty Collection, Paramo Protocol 2020 and the Convention 182, prohibiting the worst form of child labor of the International Labor Organization, that's the ILO, ratifies ratification for Namibia's 2020. At the national level, Article 15 of Namibian Constitution provides for the protection of the rights of the children and its and it states, among others, that the rights to the name, the rights to, to be a nationality, protection against economic exploitation of under age 16 years old, protection of under 14 years old against child labor, and the protection against forced labor. Subsequently, to the provision in the country's sub, su, supreme law, Namibia has enacted Child Care and Protection Act Number no. Three of 2015, which outlines the protection which all children in Namibia are entitled, including protection from violence, exploitation, abuse, and trafficking. The Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication, and Social Welfare has a mandate to provide protection and the care for children in Namibia as well, preventing responding to incidents of gender-based violence against children. In an effort to develop strong evidence-based program that will respond to violence against children, the ministry conducted a survey on the violence against children and youth in 2019. Based on the survey findings, the ministry has developed and launched a national plan of action to end violence against children and the youth. That is for 2021 to 2024, at interministerial dialogue on violence against children. Furthermore, Namibia is one of the few African countries with a comprehensive and a fully state-funded state social assistance system consisting of old age, disability pension, pension for all veterans, and social assistance for children. In an effort to strengthen the country's social protection system, especially to enhance protection towards children and youth, cabinet has approved the country's first ever social protection policy. Namibia joined the Pathfinding Initiative in 2020 as a new pathfinder country. Namibia has pledged to implement action to end all forms of violence and against children. Sorry, form of violence against children by implementing the INSPIRE strategy at a scale and monitoring its effects through the five-year National Plan of Action to End Violence Against Children. Number two, challenges. <clears throat> Despite the policy and plan put in place to strengthen the child protection system, the country still faces challenges in ending violence against children. The survey undertaken in 2019 showed high prevalence of violence against children with that 32.7% of girls 
and 39% of boys experience physical violence at the hands of parents, caregivers before the age of 18. Uh, number three, priorities for future. Despite challenges, the Namibian government under the leadership of His Excellency, Dr. Hage Genko, of course, and the legacy left by the, his two predecessors remained committed, remains a commitment to the war against poverty and gender-based violence, including violence against the children, girls, girl and a boy child. The Ministry of Gender, Poverty, Eradication and Social Welfare, in collaboration with other ministries, offices, and agencies commenced with the implementation of in, in, sorry let me repeat that with other, uh, co uh, the ministry with collaboration with other officials uh, offices ministries and the agencies commenced with the implementation of activities under the national action plan to end violence against children and the youth Given the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic, Namibia, through its relevant OMAS, is aligning herself to the new technological norm of virtual engagement in the implementation of most activities. Director of Ceremonies, allow me, as I conclude, to reiterate the government of Namibia's commitment to, uh, to deliver on the Target 16.2 of the SDGs, aspiration number six and seven of agendas 2063 and 2040 through the aforementioned programs and initiative. With these few remarks, I thank you for your attention, dear colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Minister Doreen Sioka, thank you for your comments. And thank you for closing on reminding us about the linkage, about what happens locally and what is happening globally, for linking the efforts and the priorities in Namibia with the aspirations of um, the SDGs, and in particular, um, SDG 16.2. Um, I note with a lot of enthusiasm and, and um, hope Efforts, the remarkable efforts you have put in becoming a Pathfinder country. And you have our commitment as the African Partnership to End Violence Against Children and SCPF that we will walk alongside you in that journey. Thank you, Madam Minister. And on that note, um, I would like to invite our next speaker. We have with us um, Her Excellency Mrs. Helen Marie Lorenz Ibudo. I hope I have pronounced the name correctly. And then she is the Minister of Women, National Solidarity, Family and Humanitarian Action of the Republic of Burkina Faso. We are honored by your presence, Honorable Minister, and I'll now pass the, fl the floor to you. Please go ahead, Honorable Minister. Rassurez-vous, vous, vous n'avez pas écorché mon nom. Madame la Directrice Exécutive de African Children Policy, Forum, chers participants, mesdames et messieurs. C'est avec un grand enthousiasme et un réel plaisir que je participe. I'm very glad to be here and participate in this uh, virtual high-level conference on eliminating all forms of violence against children in Africa. This is a good opportunity to share our experience and consider together the way forward uh, to make sure we reach an Africa free of violence against children. According to the preliminary results of the fifth population household census of Burkina Faso in 2019, in Burkina Faso, the share of children and, and teenagers from 0 to 19 years old represents 55.79% uh, of the population. A majority of these children lives in a context characterized by poverty, persisting gender and disability inequalities, uh, traditional practices, and um, uh, um, problems in terms of uh, harmful socio-cultural 
practices, the security and humanitarian crisis that we are facing since 2015 increases the vulnerability of children that account for 60.5% of the uh, IDPs uh, by the 30th of June 2021. This crisis exacerbates um, importantly the violence against children um, uh, and creates new issues uh, such as non-accompanied children, separated children, IDPs children, and children in the street and armed groups. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, violence against children are multiple and they have diverse forms. The results of the national study of the violence against children in Burkina Faso in 2018 indicates the following prevalence for the following types of violence. Physical violence, 24.6% in children from 0 to 11 years old and 15.6% in children aged 12 to 17 person. Emotional or psychological violence is 27.2% in 0, point, uh, 0 to 11 years old and 25.7% in children aged 12 to 17 years old. Sexual violence, Prevalence is 3.1 person in children 12 to 17 years old. Labor exploitation of children, 12.4 person in uh, the children aged 12 to 17 years old. And uh, female genital mutilation is 3.6 person in children 0 to 11 years old, and 18 person in girls from 12 to 17 years old. A census of children and the youth in the street made in 2016 showed that Burkina Faso had 9,330. 13 children and youth in the street, whereas this figure was 5,721 in 2010. Uh, regarding child marriage, the multiple indicators population and health survey indicates that Burkinabe women uh, form a marriage at a very early age among women aged 25 to 49 years old during the survey, one in 10, so 10 person was already married at 15. Faced with this situation, the government of Burkina Faso made child protection a priority and a, a prerequisite of its development. Since a few years, the government has started uh, to implement a legal and institutional framework that's favorable to a child promotion and protection. To this end, Burkina Faso has not only ratified the quasi-totality of international legal instruments and regional legal instruments, related to children, such as uh, the uh, CDC and uh, CA, uh, African Charter, and has adopted important internal legal instruments, especially the law of 15th of May 2008 on the fight of smuggling against person and assimilated practices, the law of 13 of May 2008 on um, labor code, the law of 13 of May 2014 for the protection of children in conflict with the law or in danger, and the law of 31st of May 2018, that's a, a criminal code that integrates a set of mechanisms on prevention, elimination, and uh, reparation for violence against women and children and victims. Also, there is an institutional mechanism that uh, gathers all the structures um, that act towards the children. So these are um, state structures, NGOs, and CSOs. And my department ensures and coordinates that all actions are correctly coordinated towards protecting children. And such legal and institutional framework has allowed to make great strides in fighting against violence against children. Our country has strategic and operational documents, ones being the National Parent Education, Parenting Program, 2016 
in 2020, the National Strategic Plan for Promoting the Elimination of uh, FGMs in Burkina Faso 2016-2020 and its Operational Plan of Action 2019-2020, the National Strategy of Prevention and Elimination of Child Marriage in Burkina Faso 2016-2025 and its Operational Plan of Action 2019-2021, the National Strategy 2019-2023, for fighting against the worst forms of child labor and its operational plan of action 2019-2021, the national strategy 2020-2024 for protecting children and its operational plan of action 2020-2022, and the national plan of action for fighting against uh, violence against children 2021-2023. This has allowed Burkina Faso to strengthen its national uh, child protection system them by implementing a national uh, task force for child protection that was implemented and became operational at the national level in 2009. Also at the regional level, they are currently under implementation. We have seven currently in place, 45 networks for protecting children in the provinces and 79 uh, municipal networks for protecting children, as well as 490 community units for child protection. All these networks help us report uh, cases of children through helplines. So we have different helplines. The 116, that's uh, uh, for uh, children victims of violence or at risk of violence. There is also a green number, which means that's free, uh, 8001287 for uh, gender-based violence, a green number for um, a female genital mutilation, 8001112, Another green number uh, for security, 1010, uh, the police, 17, uh, the firemen, 18, and uh, gendarmerie, 16. All these uh, networks are, all these helplines are coordinated in a one, um, one helpline. So whatever number you call, there is uh, one place uh, where they will um, they will pick up the phone and reply to you and uh, guide you to the relevant um, structure. We also have different mechanisms such as 261 hosting families that are certified. We have six educational boarding schools for children in the street, 76 centers um, for uh, children at risk, one center so, for children victims of uh, gender-based violence, 36 centers of transit, 266 uh, spaces that are child-friendly, uh, etc. Today, in all the regions where there are security challenges, uh, social workers have been trained to manage cases and use the information management system on child protection that's based on digitalization of uh, cases management, CEPIMS Plus. Despite all these important progresses made by the country, there are still a number of, uh, of challenges. The need to systematically report cases, the effective functioning of all the networks for child protection, the implementation of uh, cases management and extension of CPMIS plus to the whole country, fighting against the phenomenon of uh, children and women in the street, especially for uh, IDPs, supporting effectively all the children victims of violence that have been identified, especially the non-accompanied or separated children or children associated to uh, associated with armed groups, 
schooling, the effective schooling of children at risk of violence, um, and the enforcement of legal and regulatory um, texts about child protection, the effective implementation of the agreements between states, strengthening of community mechanisms in child protection national system, the effective coordination of all the mechanisms of all the actors towards child protection and the location of financial resources for fighting against uh, for protecting children. To conclude, I would say that children, um, that violence against children is a plague that needs concerted action. No ministry nor organization can end violence against children alone. We have to make partnerships. We have to strengthen our partnerships. This is only together in a concerted manner that we will manage to protect our children. We need stronger partnerships with the participation of children because we know that the more a child uh, buys in, uh, the more success we'll have. We have to have an inclusive approach, and this is only so that Burkina Faso believes that all African countries can hand in hand in a synergy such as the one we see today in exchanges and in sharing experiences. Only then we will achieve an Africa free of violence against children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister Mrs. Helen. And um, before I go further in appreciating your statement, I will invite our producers to share with us a short message from ACPF and APEVAC. Thank you so much. My English is not perfect, so I prefer explain explain myself in uh, in French. Merci infiniment pour um, pour cet engagement aussi sur la protection des enfants. Merci pour nous avoir associés à ce débat. Et nous savons que pour construire un bon adulte, il faut déjà construire un bon enfant. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, and thank you for your very comprehensive remarks. And um, um, I do not attempt to summarize, but I really like how you've put together the importance of data and how you have used that data throughout your statement, you know, and really translated the laws into the policies and how and the efforts that Burkina Faso is making in translating these policies into practice. Um, I like very much also your connection. When, in, in the reality of the context that African countries are, are facing, whether, whether we have internally displaced people, we have violence against women interlinking with violence against children, and that reinforces your closing message on the importance of us coming together, working in a concerted synergistic partnership, really, if we are going to address the problem of violence against children. Yes, heritages. So it's beautiful when we can speak in different languages and we have the interpreters to help us. So please do not apologize. I hope that one time we will even be able to speak in our vernaculars and have a meeting such as this one and we have interpreters enabling us to listen and understand to each other in our diverse African vernaculars. So thank you very much, um, Honorable Minister Mrs. Helen, and I look forward to our continued partnership with you. But I'm not closing the meeting. I am delighted to invite my friend, my partner, my colleague, Honorable Minister Mrs. Imen Zahoni Huimel. She will forgive me for mispronouncing her name. I still do that. Um, she is the Minister of Women, 
family and the elderly from the Republic of Tunisia. And she is, she is an extremely committed um, minister. And I have interacted with her on different platforms to end violence against children, including the, the past event, part of the Solution Summit series to end corporal punishment against children. And so, Honorable Minister, it's a pleasure to interact with you again, and you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, mesdames et messieurs, honorable intervenants et invités, bonjour tout le monde. Je suis honorée de participer aujourd'hui à cette conférence internationale de, de haut niveau qui ambitionne d'amplifier le succès de l'Afrique et de mobiliser le leadership politique en vue de mettre fin à violence against children. Therefore, I would like to commend the organizers for the choice of this theme, especially. Ladies and gentlemen, Tunisia has always strived to invest in human capital in order to overcome all its challenges, social or developmental or economic challenges. Our country has always uh, strived to be um, to achieve the rule of law, where the rights of each and every one, and especially of the child, of the child, uh, can be prevailing. Therefore, Tunisia is also uh, is always cited as uh, championing for uh, child rights in Africa, um, and we are on the forefront, especially on the protection of children against all forms of violence, against abuses and exploitation, and also on uh, properly caring for uh, children who are uh, abandoned, vulnerable, marginalized, or with specific needs. This is why we have ratified and signed all uh, the relevant child rights instruments at the uh, international and regional level, especially in 1991, and the Convention on the Rights of Children. And in 2018, Tunisia has adhered to its third additional protocol on individual uh, complaints, therefore becoming the first uh, country of, the, of Northern Africa and the Middle East to do so. We have also implemented Lanzarote Initiative on protecting of children against exploitation and sexual abuses, and we became the first country outside European countries to do so. In the same uh, idea, the Minister of Women has also submitted last year to the Parliament a bill for um, signing, adhering, and ratifying the Istanbul Convention about domestic violence. Multiple uh, laws have been adopted, especially the law uh, for protecting children adopted in 1995 that had a lot of innovative um, measures such as obligation to report cases of violence against children. This code is currently being revised by the Ministry of Justice in order to add new, uh, new provisions related to child victims. In 2018, Tunisia has banned all um, corporal punishments against children. And Tunisia has also banned um, corporal um, discipline um, in the family. We are the 27th country in the world to do so. A series of deep reforms have been implemented as well in the related sectors, such as uh, public health, social policies, education, and we did so in order to mobilize a common um, coordination of um, in a common action of all the actors towards protecting children. This has been translated especially in our constitution of 2014, where the state guarantees the respect for the rights of the child. And it also says, it also provides that uh, the 
the, the interest of the child must be uh, the prime consideration. We have also law number 61 against preventing smuggling and trafficking persons and children. In 2017, another asset, law number 58, on eliminating violence against women. So that law provided that all violence against children is considered an ex aggravating circumstance uh, for um, I mean, at the court. And last month, Tunisia has adopted a law that banned uh, exploitation and labor of the child in uh, the sector of uh, tourism. Despite all these strides, there are many big challenges to overcome. Uh, it's true that uh, girls and boys in Tunisia are still victims of violence made mostly uh, by the parents. The number of reports by our uh, child protection delegates reached 17,000 plus in 2018, which means a 30, uh, a big increase since 2010. We have approximately one third of uh, psychological violence um, and another third of sexual violence and the last third of um, domestic violence, physical violence. 58% of the pupils in Tunisia have been victims of any type of violence and 3% sexual violence. Social, uh, sexual abuse and sexual bullying of children or harassment of children is on the rise. The online images of uh, child sexual abuses have increased. However, there is no precise and accurate data on this type of violence in Tunisia. Ladies and gentlemen, the efforts made to contain the pandemic of COVID-19 are, of course, um, crucial, but they have also exposed children to an increase in violence, especially within the family. And in Tunisia, we are aware of all types of consequences of violence against children. Therefore, we have committed to implement all our laws on children and child protection for the period 2021-2030. This is based on a sectorial approach or multi-sectoral sectoral approach, promoting a non-violent culture. And this has translated into our new uh, BEEP uh, uh, policy on child protection with concrete results and implementation of national platforms for preventing violence against children. The ministry, with its multi-sectoral strategy for early childhood, has activated a national program for parenting and this is about um, key issues such as uh, uh, food, um, mental well-being, the mother and child, co-parenting, um, positive discipline, etc. In this positive um, environment, the ministry has deployed many efforts to protect and prevent violence against children. A green number, 1809, has been implemented in order to provide families and children services to uh, listen to them and to assist them with receiving uh, reports of violence against children. Also, there is a center to, uh, uh, to a reception center for these children. 
We have also a website for reporting such cases and with the support of the Council of Europe and WF and with a wide sensitization campaign on uh, sexual harassment and others, initiatives have been set up in order for them to be able to report such cases. And recently, we have shifted parading in order to adopt new ideas to fight violence against women, children, and teenagers in order for each of them to become ambassadors uh, of this cause by developing applications in a more inclusive manner. We have started a new experience by conjugating arts and digitalization in order to maximize the impact. Ladies and gentlemen, with a profound conviction that we have a common destiny in Africa, Tunisia would like to reiterate its commitment of solidarity with the African countries, especially towards our interest in ratifying the African Charter on uh, Child Rights and Well-being that will um, be the topic of a webinar on the 27th of July in a few days. Therefore, we strengthen our role in fighting against violence against children in Africa, and we strive to collaborate in order to uh, strengthen all the policies in terms of prevention and protection of all forms of violence against children. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Vous m'avez entendu? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Merci. Honorable Minister. Mrs. Imen Zahouni, thank you very much for your comments on Tunisia and thank you for emphasizing again that the starting point is um, not just adopting the laws and the instruments and the charters, but in bringing them to life and giving life to the principles of child rights that are embedded in these charters. I congratulate um, the government of Tunisia on the progress it has made, especially in the most recent laws that you have enacted. Um, addressing the emerging forms of violence against children, like ch like what you mentioned, child labor in the context of tourism. So congratulations to the government of um, of Tunisia, and um, we as the African Child Policy Forum are really looking looking forward to um, to con to your continued demonstration of the solidarity that you have spoken of, but which we have also witnessed and. Um, and, and celebrated. So thank you very much for that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, honorable guests and excellencies, we are coming to the last part of our program. This is where we are going to be looking at what is the way forward and where we want to go from here. Allow me at this point, after having heard from our global speakers, having heard from national level speakers representing health, As all speakers have alluded to, it is together and through partnerships that we can do more. None of us alone can end violence against children. And so now I have the honor and the privilege of inviting a representative of the Africa Wide Movement for Children. This is Ata, then, um, Misela Ayo Adongo, and she speaks on behalf of this movement and the section. Welcome, Stella. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, your Excellencies, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, I speak for and on behalf of the Africa Wide Movement for Children, and I bring apologies from the President of the Africa Wide Movement for Children, who is unable to connect to connectivity issues, and so I'll deliver the statement. In his remarks, the, uh, the President acknowledges the efforts by the Africa Partnership to end violence against children and the Africa Child Policy Forum 
on this milestone of holding this high-level conference on violence against children. It acknowledges the fact that children constitute more than 60% of the population of Africa, and as such, it is therefore imperative that we as stakeholders work towards guarantee their protection from all forms of violence. He also acknowledges the fact that violence against children as all the reports have stated, have reached, has reached epidemic proportions and we need to act now. And like all the other speakers have alluded, the, more, the way forward is to ensure that we work collaboratively and manage collective action to end violence against children. Above all, the statement reiterates the need for uh, policies, the need for laws, the need for programmatic action, and multiplication to end violence against children. We, this conference comes at an opportune time when efforts to end violence against children is receiving multiple attention from regional, national, and international level. And as civil society, we do have a role to, to play in terms of galvanizing efforts and supporting the different mechanisms to push the agenda. Number one, the need to support an, a regional mechanisms to promote and end violence against children. Some of the regional mechanisms are already have already been mentioned, but I would like to highlight specifically the Africa Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child and the Regional Economic Committees that the, the civil society will work closely to, with to ensure that uh, violence against children is an integral part of the actions that they undertake, but also at the center of the conversations that happen at these levels. The deputy chair of the AU has also alluded to the fact that the, the violence against children is an integral part of the African Union mechanisms. And as civil society, we pledge and make a commitment to support the African Union in delivering this mandate, but above all, in ensuring the aspirations presented in Agenda 2063 of the African Union and Agenda 2040 are implemented and the rights of children. The second action by civil society is to use the information that is emerged from the reports that have, that have just been released. That, they, that we will use the data that has been released in the three reports to provide a baseline on how we can work differently with governments and monitor progress. Governments already have a baseline on what is happening, the situation about violence or against children, and the reports will help us to, to act as catalysts of change and work together with government to promote the agenda to end violence against children. And in this, in this decade of work together towards the realization of an Africa free from violence. The third action that we pledge to take as civil society organizations across the continent is to look on the, at the issue of resourcing. You all agree with me that uh, the, the issue of invest, investing in efforts to end children is a call that is being made at the sectors and by every actor. And as civil society, we will work with this data to ensure that um, there is increased investment to ensure that to, to make our ending violence against children a central priority in different countries, but also at the continental level. Our role as advocates and our role as, uh, as a catalyst for change will continue and we will continue working at national level to ensure that governments um, adhere to, to commitments that they make, but above all, that we as civil society support the rolling and, uh, of, of, of strategies and implementation of these strategies at national level. Civil society play a key role in terms of programming and implementing um, um, program at national level. And therefore, as civil society, we will work closely to ensure that violence against children properties are implemented. In all this, we work together and collectively with government. Our key message, key message is as one, that violence against children should be prevented. And violence against children can be prevented using existing mechanisms. We already have schools. As schools is one of the most efficient entry point to or to end violence against children. Civil society have also learned from experience that 
that uh, actions to, to air violence against children will benefit more if we learn from each other. And this Continental uh, Conference has demonstrated the benefit of learning from each other. We have heard from the different governments to also pledge a civil society that cross-country learning and collaboration will be an, an, an action that we will promote. Finally, the evidence that have been released today demonstrate that there are efforts to end violence against children, homegrown solutions that have worked. The report that was released here to stay demonstrates that there are different countries that have demonstrated the actions to end violence against children. As civil society organizations, we will pick on these solutions, the best practices, and ensure that they are not only implemented, but they are scaled up and scaled out to reach the countries, to reach the continent, and at the same time ensure that violence against children is eliminated. The last clarion call, which is everybody's call, is that ending violence against children requires collective action. Civil society organizations are part of the Africa Partnership to End Violence Against Children. And in this regard, we pledge our commitment to continue working in this collaboration to end all forms of violence against children and work towards an Africa free from violence against children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Stella Ayo Odongo. Thank you for standing in on behalf of Mr. Sisai, the president of the African um, Movement for Children. And I note the three pledges that you have made, and that is on behalf of civil society, child, the child rights um, civil society actors on the continent. And I'm pleased to hear the, the passion and the commitment to working collectively, collaboratively, to learn from each other and to advance the solutions that we know work to end violence against children. Um, and so now I want us to go to the next speaker. And um, the next speaker has a lot of weight on his shoulders, if I may say that in introducing him. This is because he is the executive director of the Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children, a partnership of more than 600 partners from across the world different continents, different countries, and different sectors, from governments, from multilaterals, from funders, from local actors and networks, from academics and civil societies, you name it, they're members of this partnership. And so I wish to invite Dr. Howard Taylor, the heavyweight he has on his shoulders, to deliver to us a statement on behalf of the members of his partnership. Dr. Howard Taylor, you have the floor. Welcome. Thank you, Joanne, for that very kind introduction. Uh, Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, distinguished speakers and guests, ladies, gentlemen, and of course, young people. It's a huge privilege to be part of this informative and inspiring conversation today on behalf of the Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children. We are a global platform launched by the UN Secretary General for collective evidence-based advocacy action and investment to end all violence and abuse of children. And let me first congratulate the African Child Policy Forum and the African Partnership to End Violence Against Children on today's publication of three important reports that are a roadmap and a call to action for us all. Let me also congratulate all of the leaders who have already shared today the steps being taken in their countries and their organizations to prevent and respond to violence and abuse of children across Africa. Your leadership really is an example to others. Every year, more than one billion children around the world experience violence, exploitation and abuse. And this epidemic of violence against children takes place at home. It happens online, at school and in the communities. And it happens in every continent, in every country, every community, every city and in all socioeconomic and cultural contexts. And as we've already heard from other speakers, Initial evidence suggests that the shocking epidemic of violence against children has got even worse during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the pandemic has disrupted violence prevention and response services for around 1.8 billion children in more than 100 countries, including across Africa. And 1.5 billion young people across every continent have been affected by school closures, losing both educational opportunities, but also the protection and support that schools can provide in helping to end violence and abuse against children. 
And yet, and yet, despite this, I believe we have an unprecedented historical opportunity to end violence against children. And I'm optimistic because we know what it takes to end violence against children and because we're seeing growing momentum to take that necessary action, including the powerful examples we've already shared by leaders today. The evidence from Africa and globally suggests that to make progress requires five ingredients. First, high-level political commitment and leadership. Second, evidence-based solutions which are implied in the local context. Third, reliable data to inform the planning and action and to track progress against the plan, against the strategy. And fourth, collaboration across many parts of government and across civil society, faith groups, the private sector, academia, media and others, and the involvement of children and young people all to help prepare and then implement a costed national action plan. And fifth and finally, financial investment. And with thanks to the very hard work of the African Child Policy Forum, the African Partnership to End Violence Against Children, and many other champions who are part of today's event, 12 African countries, <coughs> excuse me, have taken the bold step to become a pathfinding country within the End Violence Partnership, and others are in the process of applying. Pathfinding countries are those whose leaders who have made that political commitment, prepared a national action plan, and are preparing to implement that plan for impact at scale. And those 12 African countries are part of a much lar larger global group of 37 countries who have become pathfinders. Countries as diverse as Canada, Colombia, Finland, France, Sweden, Japan, and the United Arab Emirates, all united in a shared mission to end violence against children, all of whose leaders have acknowledged both the nature and the extent and the trends of violence and abuse of children, spoken out about it, and are taking deliberate action, as we've heard from leaders today. And I don't want to pretend for a moment that any of this is easy, but I do want to emphasize that it's possible with the right commitment, the evidence, and the support, as we've heard today. Earlier this year, as part of the Together in Violence Campaign and Solutions Summit series, the End Violence Partnership convened a group of global experts to prepare a list of cost-effective policy proposals to end violence against children, informed by the INSPIRE strategies, which others have already mentioned. These policy pro proposals will be launched this month, and they include evidence-based recommendations to ban all forms of violence against children by 2030, including corporal punishment, to equip parents and caregivers to keep children safe, to make the internet safe for children, to make schools safe, non-violent and inclusive, and to protect children from violence in humanitarian settings. At the Together to End Violence Leaders event later this year, leaders from all sectors and all continents will share the steps they have taken or are planning to make progress against these policy proposals and broader proposals. Ladies and gentlemen, if we are to achieve our shared vision of ending violence and abuse of children, we must galvanize more leadership commitments and faster progress. And to do that, we must make the case that ending violence against children is right, it is smart and it is possible. It's right because every child deserves to grow up safe and secure. It's a smart investment because violence against children has significant direct and economic costs and it undermines children's health, education and development. In a sense, it undermines all other investments already being made in children. And it's possible. We have enough evidence, enough proven or promising solutions to know what works to stop it. And I do want to recognize the economic pressure that every government, every finance minister is under. That's the case in normal times, and it's been exacerbated by the direct and the indirect economic costs of COVID-19. And in this economic con context of competing priorities and constrained resources, we must now make an even stronger evidence-based investment case for action to end violence against children. Let me give just one example. Yesterday, at a side event of the Global Education Summit, being hosted next week by the governments of Kenya and the United Kingdom, the World Bank published an investment case for ending violence in and through schools. And the Safe to Learn Coalition published a new strategy building on the World Bank's investment case for action to embed proven solutions, and in doing so to help realize the win-win of, to be had of both investing to end violence in schools and thereby improving learning outcomes 
for all girls and boys. And the World Bank's investment case makes a very powerful case based on the direct and the indirect economic cost of violence in schools and the F investing in proven solutions, proven interventions to keep children safe at school have a very high benefit to cost ratio. Ladies and gentlemen, as the world starts to emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic, we have an opportunity to reimagine and create more peaceful, just and inclusive societies. And events such as this one today provide information and inspiration for us on that journey. Information and recommendations from the report, such as those published today by ACPF and APEVAC, and inspiration from committed leaders and knowledgeable experts. So let's take the reports published today, be energized by the political leadership we have seen demonstrated and heard today, and step up our collective efforts. Let's translate what we know works already into accelerated progress so that every child in Africa can grow up safe, secure, and in a nurturing environment. We look forward to working with you, supporting with you, and sharing Africa's progress and lessons learned with the rest of the world so they too can learn what Africa has learned as we together make this important journey to end all violence against children wherever in the world they may live. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Howard Taylor. Thank you very much for your support and solidarity and for linking the Africa partnership closely to the global partnership. Thank you for also reminding us the five key ingredients on what really needs to happen on this moral, legal, social responsibility that we all carry. Um, allow me to roll over now to the next and final speaker of our event this afternoon. Um, this conversation would not be complete without um, a representative from the Africa Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of Children. They are really the custodians of the African Charter for Children and therefore hold a huge responsibility for advancing the rights and well-being of African children. And now I have the special, um, the special responsibility of inviting Honorable Madam Avar Gava, who is the Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Children from the African Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of Children. Madam Ava will um, deliver her statement and that will take us close to the end of our session. Welcome, Madam Ava. Thank you very much, Dr. Joan. Uh, good afternoon. His Excellency, Dr. Lazarus Chakwera, the President of the Republic of Malawi. Her Excellency, Dr. Monique Sazambagawa, Deputy Chairperson of the AU Commission, the Honorable Ministers from Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Namibia, and Tunisia, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The African Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child welcomes you to the launch of the three reports and commends the ACPF initiative regarding the establishment, establishment of the African Partnership to End Violence Against Children and the stewardship that resulted in this milestone. This high-level launch is indeed a landmark event for the continent as it brought all the key stakeholders together with a view to mobilizing political will and action on ending violence against children in Africa. It unites all of us present here. And this has always been the vision of the Agenda 24, which is promoted by the, the Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child. The adoption of the Agenda 2040 is a visible example of the extent to which the committee has been dedicated to addressing VAC on the continent. The committee, its mandate to promote and protect the rights of the child has also engaged in general comments and has issued several general comments aimed at improving the implementation of the Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child. And it has also engaged both uh, state parties in constructive dialogues uh, on specific manifestation of violence against children. And it has engaged specifically on um, 
or issues affecting children during emergencies, for instance, the COVID-19, guiding notes of the committee during the COVID-19. It has conducted investigative missions. It has handled communications, bordering VAC, and several other uh, proactive actions towards the overall elimination of violence against children on the continent. And in the process, and, and the, through the process of implementing its mandate, the, the committee has seen and noticed very encouraging political commitment from African countries to address VAC on the continent through multi-sectoral coordination. And very obvious too was the need to update our laws, the need to strengthen our institutions, the need to come up with programs that respond to emerging issues. For instance, again, the COVID-19, and to create some social protection programs for child protection outcomes and enhance local ownership of existing violence prevention initiatives. The three reports that have launched today have highlighted the magnitude and extent of violence against children, including its devastating impact on children now and in the future. Violence against children impinges on fulfillment of children's rights in all aspects that run to survival, to development, to health, to education, to participation, their rights against non-discrimination, among others. So building on past and present continental efforts to eliminate violence against children, there is a need for continued improvement in programming and other interventions and strategies. We are reminded that we need to continue tracking the African homegrown solutions to address violence against children. This high level conversation is an opportunity to reignite our resolve to create an Africa fit for children. On behalf of the committee, I would like to call on all stakeholders, especially member states, to recommit to implement Agenda 2040, particularly as 7, that underscore the need to ensure that every child is protected against violence, exploitation, neglect, and abuse. Also, in undertaking preventive measures and responses, Inspiration 10 of the Agenda 2040 emphasizes the importance of child participation, participation because African children in their fight to eliminate violence must be able to speak out. Their voices must be taken into consideration in the fight against violence. The African Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child pledges to support the work of the African Partners to End Violence Against Children, APVA, and galvanize using the instrumentality of its mandates to galvanize political and support across the continent in order to end violence against children and through dialogue and to change through the strategies that are, 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 are that fall within the mandates of the committee. Mayor, on behalf of the committee, call upon all stakeholders to utilize this informative report to end the free from violence against children. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we bring the conference to a close, allow me uh, on behalf of the committee to make this appeal that violence against children is entirely preventable. And to adopt this focus with the possibility of prevention and put in much more effort in the area of prevent, prevent, prevention towards through uh, empowering our children. And the responsibility to prevent and all forms of violence, whether in the private sphere by adult or child violence or in public spaces rests with all of us. We are the duty bearers. We are the role players. Time is now to take unequivocal action to effectively put an end to this vice. And so on behalf of the chairperson of the African Committee of Experts on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, Honorable Joseph Ndaisa, I greet you and I thank you. I congratulate APVAC and ACF and I say felicitations to all of us here.
Salam. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Ava. And um, thank you for your remarks and for bringing us to the end of this program. Um, excellencies and honorable ministers, colleagues, partners, and friends, we have come to the end of our conference. And I'm sure you will agree with me but that the lineup of prolific, passionate, and committed speakers have made this afternoon not only informative, but also inspiring. And it is clear from each one of them what that we know what we have to do. We know the solutions, we know what needs to be done, and we also know where the gaps and the locks and the blockades are. And it is really upon us and our leaders to live up to our obligations to children. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of ensuring that all efforts to end violence against children reach and protect all children, especially the most vulnerable and marginalized on our continent. That is the only way we will be able to create a continent where the dignity of our children is respected. We should accept no less and our children should expect no less. And with that, allow me once again, um, Honorable Minister Excellence, to extend sincere apologies from Mrs. Grasha Michelle, the chairperson of ACPF um, International Board of Trustees. She was unable to join us here, but she sends her sincerest wishes and expresses her solidarity and commitment to working and working with us to end violence against children in Africa. I want to especially thank my team here at ACPF and APEVA for the tireless work they have put in very difficult circumstances in the last few months in undertaking this research in spite of the challenges of the pandemic. Thank you, my team. I also want to thank our partners without who support the three, the three reports and the event would not have been possible. Special thanks to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Malawi, to Her Excellency Dr. Monique, the Deputy Chairperson of the Africa Union Commission, and to our four honorable ministers from Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, Namibia, and Tunisia. And to all of you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, who have joined us from more than 60 countries in five continents around the world, thank you for, for taking the time and showing the interest to, to join us. And, I, and with that, I wish you a good morning and a good afternoon as you continue to do the phenomenal work wherever it is you are. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye.